Eric writes, can you show us how to make a bicycle electricity generator? RJ Software 2000, can you please make a windmill generator with one of your DC motors? How about a windmill generator from a treadmill? A homemade electric generator would be cool. Use the motors as generators and get your shop off the grid. I'm starting to see a trend here. Generators are basically motors that have been optimized to work in reverse. They take mechanical input at the shaft and convert that into electrical energy. If the generator is large enough, you could power your whole house with it. What I want to do in this first video is show you a couple of different motor types and how they might be used as generators. The second video will be a maker video. I will go through and actually build the generator. So let's get to it. Here we've got our first generator set up. Right next to it is a three phase induction motor. I'm going to be using this as my mechanical input. I've got a variable frequency drive to control this three phase motor, but it's important to know that electrically speaking, this guy is not connected to any part of the generator. It's only producing the mechanical force here to drive this shaft. This could just as easily be a windmill or a bicycle, a rowing machine, any form by which you rotate the shaft. And these guys are going to be used as my resistive load. They work on AC or DC, they don't care. So I'm going to run a DC current through them just to see how much power my generator can produce. Okay, first up, permanent magnet DC motor. I took this guy out of a treadmill. I will put the label on the screen for you. Let's fire it up. Forty four watts. Eighty five watts, eighty six volts. Eighty one, eighty two volts, one hundred and twenty watts. Seventy seven volts, one hundred and forty four watts. Seventy two volts, sixteen hundred sixty four watts. Okay, there are a couple things I want you to notice there. Number one, there's a linear relationship between the RPM and the output voltage, and that usually tracks very closely to the rate of voltage as a motor. When you switch it over and try and operate this in reverse, that mechanical energy being converted to electrical energy, it's not nearly as efficient. And so your numbers are going to vary. I've taken the liberty of writing these numbers down based on its performance as a motor. And what you'll see here on my chart is that the treadmill motor, this guy at, is rated 130 volts and 2200 watts that gives me 37 rpm per volt on the output as a generator but that's an approximate because it's not as efficient as a generator that number is going to vary a little bit but this chart if you write these numbers down like this based on your motor this will give you a good starting reference to kind of figure out what kind of performance you'll get from your motor we'll refer back to this chart a little bit more here in a minute Another drastic thing that's really devastating is the effect that the load has to the generator once you actually apply the load. As you saw, the voltage dropped dramatically after I started applying a load to it. As the output amps go up, the voltage from the motor is going to consistently drop. And you see we dropped a full 20 or so volts on our output without even reaching 200 watts worth of power being produced. This creates problems when you go to use an inverter. And that's what I want to talk about next. I now have the DC generator wired to my inverter. It's really simple wiring. It's just the positive and negative. Go to the positive and negative terminals on the inverter. This happens to be a 3000 watt 12 volt in inverter. I have a capacitor on top, which I am using to help smooth out the DC voltage a little bit because I already know that there's a problem 
with the DC with the voltage fluctuations which I showed you earlier and I'm hoping that the capacitor will solve that problem I've actually already tested this a lot and I know it doesn't work but I want to show you anyway the capacitor is discharged and it should maintain whatever voltage is being put out by my motor the inverter is very sensitive and this is where the problems come in it's looking for 12 to 16 volts exactly if you are just a hair above that or below that or even getting close to the edge it will freak out start beeping and it doesn't want to work and this is the complicated part trying to run the inverter directly off the generator let me show you what I mean All right, so we're in the voltage range now, uh, right in the middle. Like I said, when you get close to the ends, it starts beeping. All right, I'm gonna turn on the load now and let's see what happens. As you can see, only one of these bulbs is plugged in. Even when you try to fluctuate the speed, well, right now I'm still in the voltage range. The inverter is on light bulbs are plugged in that's two bulbs plugged in now and we get no power output this issue exists with all of the motors I've tested when you look at this 24 volt motor I've had this guy on the bench for several hours and this guy as well I'll spare you all that footage just to tell you the results are exactly the same with this guy this guy this guy and even that big honking motor you saw earlier, which I'm going to get back on the bench here in just a moment. The bottom line is these motors can't hold the voltage smooth enough for the inverter. Well, how do we solve this problem? Well, what I think you have to do, and this is the best solution I can come up with, is you're going to have to run your inverter off of the battery. So we'll put a battery in this system, a 12 volt battery, which will give me pure DC to my inverter. And I've already tried this. There's nothing wrong with the inverter. When you hook it up to a battery, it'll put out the power like it's supposed to. And I'll charge my battery with this generator. But then there's an additional problem. The battery itself still wants a very specific charging voltage, which means I need a charge controller. The cost is like $90, but you know, it's for science. I'm going to get that charge controller wired up and that charge controller can receive up to 100 volts which is perfect for me because I want to operate at about 90 volts. The charge controller will step down the voltage for the battery so that it'll give a good charging sequence because it's not just the same voltage all the way across. You have different charging parameters when the battery is at 30% compared to when the battery is at 90%. So you really do need a smart controller to manage your battery if you want it to last a long time. But let me show you the big guy because that's really actually a better motor for a generator if you want to produce power for say your house. I'm mostly doing this for teaching purposes. All right, we got the big boy on the bench. This is a shunt wound DC motor. It's three horsepower. I'll put the label on the screen for you. I won this guy at an auction. I got it for a whopping 25 US dollars. Still got my name tag on it from the auction. I have no real purpose for this motor except for teaching purposes and experimenting at the bench. And that's exactly why I bought it. I wanted to be able to do things like this. There are a couple ways that you can wire this motor. You can wire it for high voltage or low voltage through the field winding. But I've got this wired for low voltage uh, across the field winding. So this literally makes it a self-excited generator now with this corresponding wiring. There's some residual magnetism in the field winding. At the beginning, it'll behave like a permanent magnet motor, but with a very small magnet. Because I've got these wires wired like this, some of the current that's trying to flow through here will flow back into the field winding and build up that magnetic field. Because current will start flowing through it, the magnetic field will get bigger, which will produce more current. And it's a self-exciting cycle up until the motor is saturated. Now that's not free energy because the power is being supplied mechanically here. And that's what's forcing those electrons to move. There's no, uh, we're not creating anything new here. The wires have to be aligned in such a way that when you spin the shaft the correct direction, it builds up the magnetic field. 
if you have this wired up backwards, that voltage will just stay flat. Nothing will happen. All right, enough about the wiring. Let's get this guy connected. Our motor is all set up like the first test. The, our resistive load is hooked up directly to the DC. And what I really want you to see is the difference in the voltage drop between this motor and the other one. Now we should see that magnetic field slowly build up. Ten, fourteen, seventeen, twenty-five. So I haven't changed the speed yet, but the magnetic field in the field winding is building up. See, it's at forty-two, and then it'll reach kind of a steady state until we get to our final speed. All right, we're pretty, we're holding pretty steady between eighty-three and eighty-five volts. Let's go ahead and crank up our load. Now, if you remember the first time when I added the first bulb. The voltage dropped quite a bit. In this case, it hasn't dropped noticeably at all with 40 watts of load. Now, last time by this point, the motor had dropped all the way down to 70 or so volts. And we're still holding steady at 83, 82, bouncing around. And we're pushing right at about 200 watts. But that's because we held our voltage as well. Whereas the other one didn't quite get that high. So as you can see, the shunt wound DC motor is much better at holding its uh, voltage. And it's a much larger motor as well. So it's just going to be able to supply more current in general. Uh, I would hook this up to the inverter for you, but uh, I'll save that time on the video. You're going to get exactly the same behavior. So to kind of review what I think you should do for setting up your generator, you want to just list the stats of the motor as a motor because though that's going to be a good indicator of what kind of generator it will be. But keeping in mind, it has been optimized to be a motor. It's not going to be as efficient as a generator as it was as a motor. You can see the clear winners here are the treadmill motor and the shunt DC motor. So I do believe you could find something like this if you were very serious about producing power for extended periods of time. This is the kind of motor that you probably want to get. The wiring is relatively simple. You don't need special capacitors or a whole bunch of other things. But, but you will need some type of battery bank to store your power. You will need a charge controller of some sort. And you need one that can handle high voltages. The charge controllers that, that should be capable of handling, you know, 80 volts or even 100 volts input and they will step that voltage down for you in order to uh, charge your batteries correctly. I don't think you need a capacitor. That was something I was experimenting with. One more thing to think about is the gauge of wire that you're using. At this point, I'm only running two or 300 watts. It's not very much power. But when I go to running 2,000, 3,000 watts, I need a much heavier gauge wire, something like this, in order to make sure that I don't burn up my wires. Now, at this point, you might be wondering why not make an AC generator and avoid the inverter altogether. One of the main problems with using an induction motor, other than the, the complication in the setup, it, but it can be done, is the fact that the output speed is going to affect your frequency. And if you hook up anything sensitive to line frequency to your generator, then you may damage your equipment. If your output speed is not exactly right to get you to 60 hertz, or 50 hertz in other countries, it's gonna be a problem. What some people do is they set up their AC motor, they use bridge rectifiers to rectify it to DC, and then they still use an inverter. And that to me is extremely wasteful when you can use a motor like this, because every component in that setup is wasting power. So anyway, uh, that, those are my thoughts on the AC motor. It can be done with induction motors. It can be done with universal motors. All motors with the proper setup can be converted to a generator. It's just some are more complicated than others to get done. Now, my personal recommendation, if you have access to one, will be the shunt wound DC motor because of its ability to regulate its output voltage. And I also really like the treadmill motor uh, for the reasons that we've discussed here. All right, guys, this is a lot of fun. The next video is going to be the build video. I'm going to convert my rowing machine into a power plant. Thanks for watching.